So in this video, we're going to start looking at um, interpolation. So basically, the idea of interpolation is uh, if you have a set of data points, any set of data points, um, meaning you have x and y values. Okay, so uh, you have a set of x and y values. So you have x0, y0, x1, y1, and so on, um, xn, uh, yn. And what you want to do is essentially, um, if you look at this, for instance, here's some kind of a plot, for instance, of these points where this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. Now, what we all want to ideally do is these data points as, they, as we see them are not very useful. However, if we could fit some curve that goes through these data points or represents these data points, then that, as you might have studied in statistics also, is data fitting um, or fitting a curve to data. Now, uh, here, what we're uh, into interpolation is really trying to, in fact, have a curve that, in fact, goes through all these points. So a curve that could possibly have all these points on it, at least the given data points. And then one can actually, within a certain range of values, try to predict uh, what other values within that range would be. In any case, interpolation is about some range of values where these the, this data is somewhere where your x0, for instance, is somewhere inside this a and b up to xn. These values are within this range of values a, b, and essentially what you are trying to do is interpolate uh, the uh, output values and so that you're able to predict uh, what uh, basically is going on inside. In, in fact, of course, we can extrapolate as well. If our interpolation is, is uh, reasonably accurate, we can also extrapolate and therefore predict um, uh, what the future uh, data points uh, might be. So um, the most basic and the first type of interpolation and, and the main interpolation that we're going to be looking at is, of course, polynomial uh, interpolation. There is a reason for this, and let me... Uh, identify why we actually study polynomial interpolation. Now, polynomials have one very, uh, very good quality to them. And just to remind you all, we're really talking about uh, any nth order polynomial would be something like this, you're familiar with. And this is, uh, for instance, this is an nth order of polynomial. And um, Basically, what is interesting and important about these polynomial functions, I mean, why do we want to interpolate using them? Well, if you recall your calculus, uh, the calculus stream of courses that you would have done, you would have studied power series. And for instance, the uh, Taylor series approximations of the transcendental functions, meaning the, uh, the tangent, I mean, the trigonometrics, log, uh, exponential, and of course, uh, the rational functions. These functions, which are, which basically comprise of all the other possible functions, other than polynomial functions, uh, can be represented using polynomial functions, in fact. And the, and the Taylor series approximation is exactly that, which is, how could you represent, for instance, an exponential uh, using, uh, for instance, uh, the Maclaurin series of EX, uh, which is the Taylor series about x equals 0, is simply 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. Okay, so that in itself um, is uh, basically what you're trying to do is approximate exp the exponential using a, an infinite um, uh, order polynomial. This is an infinite power series. Now, of course, in reality, one could use an, uh, n terms of this uh, Maclaurin series and with the desired accuracy calculate any exponential value. In fact, most of the time, your calculator or, uh, or mostly most computer written routines in an Excel or they might be in any uh, or MATLAB or anything would essentially be working out um, any of their uh, trigonometric functions or their exponential function. Well, exponential you can you can possibly just raise the to, uh, the the number two point seven one eight and so on uh, to a certain power. But for instance, for sine x, uh, as you know, sine x is essentially x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x five over five factorial and so on. Odd powers there. Uh, 
And the only way to calculate sine x or, or your, how your calculator does it is basically have certain uh, terms of the series. Now, why do we keep coming back to these polynomial functions? It's, it's very simple. Polynomial functions are continuous everywhere. They are well behaved. They are smooth. They never cause any problems. They have no discontinuities. Uh, you know, all their derivatives, they are, they all live in, say, infinity. So, in, in fact, they're infinite dis uh, differentiable. Okay, their infinite derivatives exist. So these are beautiful functions. They are amazing functions. Not only that, but they have another beautiful quality, which is that um, you can represent, since you can represent any shape almost using, uh, uh, you know, uh, an nth order polynomial, depending on how large n is, you can make it very flexible and bear, basically cover or represent almost any shape. And this is obvious because, in fact, it is uh, these um, polynomial functions that are able to represent sine x, cos x, tan, exponential, log, even rational functions. So obviously, they're able to um, almost morph into any shape that you uh, require. And that is precisely why we, um, you, you will see that we will be looking at, um, whenever you study interpolation, it's always polynomial interpolation, which is extremely powerful. And that's precisely why we actually study uh, polynomial interpolation. So what we will be looking at in uh, the next uh, video um, are several different approaches to interpolation. We will be looking at the Vandermond matrix. Okay, we will be looking at the Vandermond uh, matrix, which is the most basic uh, and obvious uh, method of interpolation. And we will look at, of course, uh, the famous Lagrange polynomials, and log, uh, poly interpolation. And, uh, and the next very famous well-known is Newton's divided differences. So these will be the main uh, uh, polynomial interpolations we'll look at, and then we will move on to uh, move on to essentially uh, cubic splines. Uh, so we will be looking at spline interpolation or splines, I'll just say. So these will follow in different videos. Um, I'll stop here now as an introduction to polynomial interpolation. In the next video, we'll start looking at the Vandermond matrix. Thank you.